Here's a fun conversation that I thought would be nice to have on the channel. Let's head over onto tsn.ca because there was an article published earlier this morning about young stars who shine the brightest in the TSN's ranking of Core 4 U24 players. Now what in the world does that mean? Core 4 U24 pretty much is just a list of NHL teams talking about the core pieces they have in their systems that happen to be under the age of 24. Self-explanatory, yes, but also as intricate as any list could be. This is a list going over the rankings of teams that happen to have young players, and today I wanted to focus on Steve Eiserman and his goons, because the Red Wings actually have a pretty good standing on this list. Take a look at the analysis as to how these players have been graded. Players were graded as AAA Superstar, AA Elite, or A Starting Goalie, Top 4 Defenseman, or a First Line Forward, B Tandem Goalie, Top 4 D, or a Top 6 Forward, or C Backup Goalie, Depth Defenseman, Bottom 6 Forward. In the past, the four young top players in each organization are highlighted in our list regardless of individual grade. New this year is expanding team lists to include all A and B player prospects to reflect the depth or lack of depth each team has in players age 23 and under. Hence, the Core 4 U24 plus more tag. Man, that sounds like a Ron McLean intro to a Hockey Dead in Canada broadcast. Core 4 U24 plus more. Ay, ay, ay. Either way, the number one team, just to get things out of the way, spoiler alert, it is the Dallas Stars. Because if you go to their overall ranking, they've got Jason Robertson, AAA, Ottinger, AA, Miro Heiskanen is also a AA, and Wyatt Johnston is an A. Stankovin, Lundqvist, Harley, Bork, Leon Bichel, and Christian Cairo are all Bs, and they're all listed over here as well. And of course, there's an entire write-up about what the Dallas Stars have done well and why these players are so good, etc., etc. You can read the article if you want to go ahead and see this yourself. But the second overall team is one that I wanted to talk about too. It is the Detroit Red Wings, because they have themselves Moritz Sider, who is a double-A prospect, Lucas Raymond, also a double-A, Simon Edvinson, who is an A, Sebastian Kosa, who is an A, and Marco Casper in their prospect system, who is also an A. Now, this triumphs the rankings of teams like Buffalo, Montreal, and even going down the list, you have Vancouver, Carolina, Minnesota, and then at the very end, you have yourselves the Tampa Bay Lightning, who have only one prospect who is even ranked as a B, and that is Isaac Howard. The rest is all up to you to go out there and read, but what I wanted to do was focus on the Red Wings and the rankings here of the guys in the A's and the Triple A's, etc, etc. The write-up here says that the Red Wings have only five A or B tier prospects. That's not a lot for a team that ranks so high, but they are all A level with two double A's, Sider and Raymond, and three A's, Edvinson, Kosa, and Casper. They are the only team with no B level players listed. I just wanted to go over the rankings and try to get into a bit of semantics over here, because when it comes to this AAA versus AA ranking, AAA is defined as superstar, AA is defined as elite. There are only three AAA players on this entire article. Jason Robertson is one of them, as we had said. Kale McCarr and Jack Hughes are the other two. These are the only three AAA superstar players that have been listed in its entirety. Everybody else who is really, really good is either an A or a AA. With this idea in mind, it's understandable to me as to why Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond were not given triple A statuses, or stati? Statusi? Not too sure what the plural word for status is, but Lucas Raymond is a guy that I wouldn't necessarily place in the same tier as Jason Robertson nor Jack Hughes. The latter two of the three, I believe, are guys that could go out there and legitimately get 110 plus points every year if everything goes right. Not that Lucas Raymond isn't talented, it's just I wouldn't really place him in that same echelon of players just yet. And so, placing him here in the elite category rather than the superstar category, it makes sense. Especially when you consider the other guys that are there. I mean, look, Kale McCarr is the only AAA defenseman on the list. Moritz Sider being ranked as a AA behind Kale McCarr doesn't really sting all too much. It's good, though, just seeing Sider being mentioned on the list, because we all kind of know his struggles this season with that Ben Sherratt pairing. It's been very unfortunate to watch. 
so far, but going over to the other guys that the Red Wings have, I am kind of intrigued at seeing Simone Edvinson, Sebastian Kosa, and Marco Casper all ranked in the same tier. Now, I like that this happened, don't get me wrong, it's just if you had asked me to do this sort of evaluation yesterday before this article was published, okay, try to rank the Red Wings prospects and say, you know, double-A, triple-A, or whatever, I personally probably would have had Casper as a B plus, I mean, look, their analysis for just regular single A territory, this is a starting goalie, a top pair defenseman, or first line forward. Now, to me, I don't think Marco Casper is necessarily going to be a first line forward, especially on the Red Wings, where Dylan Larkin is probably going to be sticking around for a while, assuming he resigns, of course. Marco Casper, to me, was always going to be that very, very capable second-line center, a guy that could just be a rock. You know, he does everything right. He scores some points, he plays fantastically along the boards, he plays amazingly with the puck off of his stick. He was just such a good player that was rock-solid everywhere, but wasn't really too spectacular at anything. In my opinion, if you were to say that Casper was going to be your first-line center long-term, I would probably say look for a better first-line center, but then again, it's fine because Larkin is here. But either way, the Red Wings, the TSN guys being higher on Casper than I am personally, that's okay. 100% fine seeing people hype up Casper in a way that says that he could be a first-line caliber forward in the near future. As for Simone Edvinson, him being ranked as a first-line top-pair defenseman, not surprising in the slightest, he's very talented, very good. We know what he was able to do in the preseason. Sure, he wasn't fantastic, but that's why he's in Grand Rapids right now, honing his game and hopefully turning into something that sort of resembles that Moritz Sider transition as a big hulking defenseman that can just dominate other players. Not to mention Sebastian Kosa, whom we already made a video about earlier this month, or was it last month? I'm not really all too sure. Kosa has had his struggles as well, but that's fine because he's still very young and getting all the reps he can in the ECHL and the AHL. This is mostly a developmental type season for this guy, so even if the numbers are not particularly great, I don't think anybody should be giving up hope on Kosa just yet. And it's why he was given that A rank in the first place, a potential starting goalie for the Red Wings in the long-term future. So, Talk to the cons your thoughts about this list over here on tsn.ca. The Red Wings being ranked as the second best U24 core four in the entire NHL. Only Dallas with their freaking franchise level Jason Robertson is up higher, but you have yourself Sider who is in the same territory of double A stardom as other double A defensemen like Miro Heiskanen, like Rasmus Dahlin, like who else is there that's on D that has the double A ranking. Okay, not Kale McCarr. Bowen Byram is over here, very nice, and Quinn Hughes, too. These are the only double-A defensemen that are listed on the entire list. What are your thoughts about Sider being included in that conversation there? Thoughts on Marco Casper being ranked as a single-A player? Do you like this? Do you not? Do you agree with it? Do you think somebody should be higher? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>